yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. Of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord, that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. You might, you got many that sit around and they talk about a big to do about nothing. Even about the Bible. They get in questions and things that shouldn't even be talked about. Subverting things. Hallelujah. You know, if we'll keep it pure and holy, even in our we're talking about the Bible, many just want to gender up strife. They want to debate the word. I hate that spirit. Yes, I stand in defense for the gospel, but I ain't going to stand there and just debate all the time and in no strife of spirit. I'll tell people what God tells me to tell. It's, it, it's up to them whether they receive it or not. I'm not going to sit there and just bank back and forth. I might a few times, but after that I said, Lord, I'm through. I'm through until God, I go until God says it's through. There's no, you can't have them. Them that have that old debate and strifeful spirit, you can't have them. Because they ain't want to hear truth. All they want to do is just gender strife. That's all it is. But he says right here. He said, of these things, put them in remembrance. What things is he talking about? Standing in the truth and sanctification of God. Charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Study. I quote this scripture a lot because it has a lot of meaning. Study to show thyself for prove unto God a workman. A workman works. That means you have to apply yourself. You get in there and you dig. Well, I just don't feel like reading my Bible right. That did I see that right there? If you feel like it, get in there and you study. See, that's flesh. Flesh talks to you that way. You know, you're tired, you're worn out, you don't even like it. You feel the tug of the Spirit of the Lord. Come on, come on. Get in here. Study my word. Let me talk to you. Phew. My goodness, I had a bad day. Phew. Lord in mercy. And that old flesh might have talked to you. Well, you know God understands. You know that you had it so rough. And before you know it, you allow yourself right there to talk yourself out of prayer and out of study. You know why I know? Because I've been there. You know why you know? It's because you've been there. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. But I've learned better. God has helped me to press on anyway. Press on, no matter what the day has brought. It's a study to show thyself approved a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Just any old word? No, the word of truth. His truth. His word. But shun. Shun means get away from it. That's the reason I don't have no part with it. I'll try to help somebody. But once I see that there's no help in them, I leave it alone. I shun it. But shun profane and vain balance, For they will increase unto more what? Ungodliness. That means the only thing that profits there is the flesh. And their word will eat as doeth a canker. <laughs> what is it talking about right there? That means if you allow yourself to get caught up in it, when you get it home, that thing will still eat at you. It will, you can't push it up. It'll just eat at you. You ever had somebody talk to you and you knew it wasn't in the right spirit even though it was about the word and yet when you went home, you, you got away from it, but yet when you went home, that thing was still trying to eat on you. But God said, no, nah, you got yourself away from that. You get that thing out away from you. You rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Don't you let that eat at you. Don't you let it eat at you as a canker. That means like cancer. Cancer eats away at our flesh and destroys everything that it eats on. That's the way the no one righteous, old demonal doctrines teachings and traditions of me. It eats as a cancer. Hallelujah. I have no time for it. It said, and the word will eat as do the canker. Of whom is Hadamus and Phileas. 
who concerning the truth have erred. See, he called their names, just like I called them a couple while ago. There's many I can call. Hallelujah. But I won't. I call the ones I felt to call. They have erred. Saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. That's what they were saying. But many are saying other things that are untrue, that's not biblical. And overthrowing people, catching them in that snare and that current of damnation, of demonal doctrines. Nevertheless, now listen, the foundation of God standeth sure. Even though they have erred and walked in another way, God's word stands true and sure. It's up to you to keep yourself on that sure foundation. Stand the sure of having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Is it saying that you can live in your sins? No. It says depart. If you're in, if the Lord knoweth, it says the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Hallelujah. So if you're saying you're of him and you're still living in sin, you're alive. The truth's not in you. Because you haven't departed from iniquity. Hallelujah. If the seed of God remains in you, you sin not. Why? Because you have the Holy Ghost in you that gives you power to overcome sin in the flesh. It causes you to choose the good over the bad. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This word is needful today. My goodness, it breaks my heart to see people so caught up in damn little mess. Hallelujah. They're on their way to hell and they think they're on the way to heaven. My goodness, they're deceived. They're sitting on church pews. Falling right into the gates of hell. My goodness, we as watchmen, God's watchmen, we are to stand in the gate and declare the truth of God's word. Saving them that would be lost. Hallelujah. Through the word of God. Through the Spirit of Christ. Hallelujah. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth. Some to honor and some to dishonor. See, we all have good and bad things. But see, God is cleansing us. That's the reason we go through the fire. <laughs> That's the reason we go through the fire, that He can get the good. That He can clean out the bad. And save the good. And work and build up that good. Because we all, when we come to Christ, have good and bad. Hallelujah. But it's up to us to go forth in that new creature that God has brought us into. And let Him mold us and make us into that, hallelujah, that vessel of God. A vessel of honor meet for the Master's use. This is right here. And some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man, therefore, purge himself. From these, from these, what is he talking about? All the things that causes us to miss the kingdom of God. Fornication, sin, wickedness, evil. If he purges himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, purified, and meet for the master's shoes and prepared unto every good work. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now won't you turn to Hebrews? I'm almost there. I tell you what, if you'll let this sink in your heart, my goodness, it'll bring about a difference in your life and in your walk in God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm fixing to show you something right here that's going to show you that if you're standing in truth, you're walking in truth, you cannot be an island off to yourself. Hallelujah. You need to be getting in the house of God. You Excuse me, you need to be getting under good leadership. Because you are allotted to a leader. Well, I don't know about that. Well, see, you, you just, people just don't know the word. That's what breaks my heart. They don't know the word because they haven't been taught. My goodness, people have roamed and run the aisles. That's good. I'm not against that. I'm for that. I love that. But my goodness, how much more important it is to sit down. And hear with a receiving spirit the word of God. Because it will save your soul. It's the engrafted word. That word that takes a hold of you and becomes. 
becomes a part of you. It saves your soul. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Some people think they have the one of the greatest revivals there is. If everybody shouts all over the house, that doesn't prove a thing to me. What shows me that God moved in revival is that a change came and it's still there. I had a pastor write me. Oh, well, I was talking to him on the phone. Hallelujah. They told me, this is Sister Brenda. You know that change that came to the church while you were here? It's still here. It's still here. I said, praise God. Praise God. And let me know that my labor is not in vain. Hallelujah. It's still there. It's still got a hold of people's lives. Hallelujah. That's the reason we go with the gospel. Is to bring forth that true conversion. We don't go that people might shout. Where they're praising and shouting there. Yes, there was. That that didn't bring the change. It was the pure, undulterated word of God that brought that change. If people could just realize how important this word is. They have believed the lie that has been put out over this earth. Oh, this is just a history book. Man wrote it. Oh, it's just a history book. Oh, yes, it's full of history. It's history that God has preserved. And it was written by holy men that were moved by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. There's a road map that's been set out for us. I'm going to start reading it, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 1. Let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. Remember them that are in bonds as bound with them and them which suffer adversity as bring yourselves also in the body. You know, Paul said, I am a prisoner of Christ. I'm in his bonds. We are a prisoner of Christ if we have totally laid down our life and picked up our cross and followed him. Hallelujah. It goes on, it says, Remember them that are in bonds. He's talking about leaders, ministers. Them as bound with them and them which suffer adversity. We suffer adversity all the time. The devil is continually trying to stop us. Trying to stop what God has ordered to go forth. As being yourselves also in the body. Because see, we are all in the body of Christ. We all hold different offices. But we are all witnesses. Hallelujah. Marriage is honorable in all. And the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. This word judges. This word is God. This word judges. Hallelujah. It says, let your conversation be without covetousness. And be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what men will do unto me. Now listen. Right here, this is why you cannot be an island unto yourself. People say, well, I'll say God at home. I don't like what that leader says. Well, I just don't agree. If they would get in prayer, and they would really truly seek God and line it up with the Word of God. They would see that that leader. Now I'm talking about not good. I'm talking about good leaders. I ain't talking about these old harlings and these old wolves. If, if God shows you hallelujah that they're a wolf and a harling, you need to be fleeing. You need to be running to a good church, a church that God has established with His Word. Hallelujah! A good leader that will stand there between you and the wolf. Remember that which have the rule over you. Talking about your pastor, your shepherd. You who have spoken unto you the word of God. That's what we do. We bring you the word. We bring it and dish it out how God wants it to be brought forth. Whether it's through teaching, whether it's through preaching. Hallelujah. Manifestation of the spirit of God being wrought in the house through the body. Whose faith follow? I 
know, people say, well, I don't follow man, I follow Christ. <laughs> what did he just say right there? Whose faith follow? Your shepherd. Follow their faith in God. They're leading you down the right path. Follow them. Considering, see, he's telling you to try the Spirit, see whether they're right or not. Considering the end of their conversation. It's saying, you look at that shepherd's life right now. Not where they started out. Many start out good, but are they still standing good? You look at that shepherd's life. Are you seeing the fruits of Christ being bare forth in their body? Are they standing there in a prayerful mind? Hallelujah. Weeping for your souls and teaching you the word of God. That will cut away everything from you that's unlike him. And that will build up everything in you that is like Christ. Hallelujah. We've got to get in the order of God. I'm telling you children of God. It said, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. In other words, he said, look, I do not change. That's the reason I tell people, hold to God's unchanging hand. Be not carried about with diverse, that means many. Various. Many and various. Strange doctrines. For it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace. You cannot get established on your, unless you're under good leadership establishing you in this work. Hallelujah. Well, I can pray at home and I can fast at home and I can do this and I can do that. No, you're walking contrary to God's word and if you've got a ministry in your life, you will never amount to nothing. You'll never be able to carry the word like God wants you to carry if you don't get under leadership. If you're just running here to and fro, there's some, they're wandering stars. They're clouds without water. They'll go get in this church for four or five months until the pastor says something they don't like. Correcting their old flesh ways. Well, I just don't like that. I'm just going to jerk the whole family out. And there they go in their old rebellious ways. And they bring hardship on their self. Hallelujah, because God's correction is going to come and get you. I'm telling you. You walk through things that you bring on yourself sometimes because of a rebellious spirit. But it ain't only you suffering. It's the family that you're pulled out of the house of God. I see this over and over. I've had parts of those families to come to me and this is to bring them. My parents are good people. They love God. But every time we get start getting established in a word, they don't like something and they jerk us out. Oh, I want to serve God. And we go home and we get caught up in such a mess. Uh, it breaks my heart. Anybody mistakes this for depression, you are wrong. This is a burden. But I weep for people because I see them destroyed left and right. I tell you, people like that, they're reckoning days coming. The reckoning day is coming. Because God will not continue to let you do it. He will not let you continue to destroy your soul. Hallelujah. You better get straight. You better get your life straight. Get your spirit right. Get where God wants you. Hallelujah. You can try to go everywhere else. If God don't want you there, you ain't doing nothing for that church, and that church can't do nothing for you. That's true. I mean, you might get strength time and time again. But I mean, you won't never go and be established in God like you need to be. Only that pastor that you are allotted to. Do you know that you have uh, souls that are allotted to you? If you have a ministry in your life, you have souls that are allotted to you. You are required to get them souls. This reason is so important. 
Can we stand there and say, Lord, I had a husband. Lord, I had a wife. Lord, I had children. Father, I can't help it. Oh, uh-uh. It won't matter. I could stand there and say, well, Lord, I got children. I got grandchildren that need me. Lord, uh, Lord, I would just love to be with them every day. Lord, I would just love to be able to just to enjoy them. Hallelujah. He lets me from time to time. That ain't what I'm called to do. I was chosen to carry forth this word in the manner that he wants me to carry it forth. And I've got to put him first above all. If I put him first, you better believe he's going to take care of me and my people. My people here in this church and my people that's in my family is going to take care of me. Hallelujah. I pray continually for my grandchildren and my children. My granddaughter, Brenda, that's named after me. Her and her half, not half sister, but her stepsister was walking down a road and a car had come by and it hit her on the arm. It could have hit her full force. I don't know how fast it was going. But it hit her on the arm. It hurt her arm. I know God. Had an angel of the Lord standing right there and scooped that car over. He could have moved it over enough that it didn't touch her whatsoever. But I believe sometimes God allows things to touch to let you see how powerful He is. Just how powerful His keeping power was that day. My little granddaughter, she was riding on, uh, on a tricycle, on her bicycle, went down this concrete. She didn't have a helmet on. And she fell and she cracked her head and she cracked her skull. Pray. I was praying. God, don't you let nothing happen to them. Lord, you keep them, Jesus. Her mom got a hold of me and said, Brenda, please pray. Please pray. She didn't know it, but I was already praying. I already knew that something had went right. Hallelujah. And God, they were saying that that she could have a concussion on her head because of her there was a crack in her skull. But God healed it. Oh Rabahanda Rabahuri Beyondorosa. God healed it. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes we don't have and and our family don't benefit because we are rebellious. But if we'll walk obedient to God, preach His word and carry it, if the Lord willing, we got our plane tickets. Praise God. God made a way. Think it ain't hard on two women to go two and a half day travel through airplanes to carry the gospel to a people that we don't even know. If you think that ain't hard on the flesh, you just think about yourself, do it. Hallelujah. But I go in boldness of God and strengthen Him. And as much as my feet are going to be on foreign soil, who knows? I might be laying my life down naturally. Giving my life for the gospel somewhere. I don't know. But the Lord, He can send me to many souls and He can preserve me till He returns. Or I go a natural death like John did. <laughs> or I could go by mothership. God knows what He has planned for my life. I just pray, Lord, keep me faithful. Help me to endure to the end. Just keep me faithful, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, no matter what comes against me, you keep me faithful in it. Let me try to finish this up. Hallelujah. Be not cared about with diverse and strange doctrines, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats, which have not profited them, that have been occupied therein. We have an altar whereof they have no right to eat, which serve the tabernacle. For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned without the camp. In other words, all those old sacrifices they used to do, they had their time and their right place. But Jesus Christ is that ultimate sacrifice for us. Woo! Hallelujah. 
Aren't you glad that we don't have to do all that no more? I am. <laughs> but if he wanted me to, I would. Hallelujah. But Jesus Christ is that sacrifice for me. Hallelujah. He's the one that shed his blood. He don't do it over and over again. He done it one time and one time only. Hallelujah. Satan is beneath his heel. Let us go forth therefore unto him without the count. Bearing his reproach. We bear a reproach. Jesus bared a reproach. We bear a reproach. Now everybody wants this pretty Jesus that's on the cross with a little trickle of blood that has no reproach. That's the Jesus they want. They don't want that Jesus that bared shame and reproach for their sin. That's covered in blood from head to toe. Hallelujah. Oh, as a lamb to the slaughter. Oh, they don't want that Jesus that suffered. Hallelujah. They don't want that one. But they want the one that the pretty Jesus. That's what the world wants. Oh, but give me that suffering Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, just help me to be willing to suffer with you that I can reign with you. He said, let us go forth therefore unto him without the count bearing his reproach. For here we have no continuing city. But we seek one to come. We are just pilgrims passing through this earth. This earth is not my home. My home is with Christ. That's what I seek. I seek to be with my Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, I know I have to maintain here. Lord, I know I have to go through as a pilgrim. But Lord, just keep me faithful and righteous in you. Hallelujah. Jesus went out to camp. He was slain on Calvary's hill outside of Jerusalem. That way his blood covered the Gentile and the Jews both. He suffered without the camp. By him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That it saves us whenever we want to. No, it says continue. See, we should continually have a praise. Does that mean that you have to go around glory, 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 No, uh-uh. It means a continual praise. That means that you're always thankful for everything that God does for you from the least to the greatest. Hallelujah. Oh, I, I am careful. Careful. And I have purpose in my heart to do this. I am careful just to be as thankful over the least as I am for the greatest that God does for me. I don't want him to think one I owe that I am not thankful. Oh, hallelujah. And if I find myself saying something, I say, Lord, if that's if I'm complaining, Father, please show me. I don't want to ever complain. Lord, I don't want you to be displeased in me. Hallelujah. I want to always, Father, talk and walk in your righteousness. Because I, I see what happened to complainers. <laughs> You go and you look, you see what happens to complainers. You don't want to get caught in that snare. Hallelujah. So I tell you what, I try to be careful. I want, he told me to watch diligently over my heart. Protect this pearl of great price that he has given me. Hallelujah. And I try my best to do that. And be aware. See, sober mindedness is being aware of what the devil is grinding at you. Sometimes you can get caught up or watch your face and run away that if you don't watch it, you'll say something and you speak out of turn. Well, we have an advocate with a father. Lord, forgive me. Ask for forgiveness if you said something out of turn to somebody. Don't just go off and let the devil war their minds and say, oh, my goodness, if that's a child of God, I don't want it. Uh-uh. You say, look, I serve my Lord Jesus Christ and I'm sorry. I spoke out of turn and I shouldn't have. Would you please forgive me? Well, see right there, then they go and say, well, my goodness, that person's real. That person's real. Hallelujah, it's time to be honest to God, to everybody else. If you can't be honest with God, you can't be honest with nobody else. Hallelujah, and I don't care who you are, you can't hide nothing from God. He has an all-seeing eye. He hears everything that is spoke. He sees everything that is done. And he even knows the very intent of our heart. Ain't nothing you can hide. He said what is done in secret will be shouted from the rooftops. Did he say you would just let a little bit of it be revealed? Uh-uh. <laughs> He's letting you know you better get this thing right now because I'm fixing to expose you. 
I'm fixing to let people see what's going on here. And praise God that He does. Because if He didn't, we could be led astray. But see, that's where good leadership comes in. They will keep you rooted and grounded in the Word of God because that's all that they will bring to you. Hallelujah. I'm fixing to wrap this up. Hallelujah. For here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God. Continue, that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. But to do good and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifice, God is well pleased. See, God is, is pleased in our well-doing. Do we do well-doing to be saved? No. We do good things and good works because we are saved. Now turn to 1 Peter. Hallelujah. This is the last place I'm going to have you turn. Peter, this is the first chapter, 1 Peter chapter 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia. Capronaca, Asia, and Bathion, I guess. Anyway, Lord, forgive me. Elect. Now, who is he talking to? He's talking to the elect. According to the foreknowledge of God, the Father through sanctification, that means purification of the Spirit. We are purified through the Spirit, children. By what? Being obedient to the Word. Being doers of the Word, not hearers only. Unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Hallelujah. You know Jesus Christ is a quickening spirit. My goodness, ain't no way His spirit can live and abide in us and us not be quickened in Him. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, He's there to encourage us, to strengthen us, to correct us. Why? Because He loves us. Because He loves us. He wants us to, to go forth and be strong. Be strong in it. I'm going to read a few here real quick. You can write them down if you want to. It says Psalms 119 and 9. Now listen to what David said. He said, Withal shall a, he said, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his ways? Now he asked this question. In other words, he said, How can a young man cleanse his ways? He says, By taking heed. When you take heed to something, that means you do it. Thereto, according to thy word. In other words, you do the word. The word is what cleanses you through the Spirit. You come obedient. You obey the commandments of God. And therefore, and we do this through faith. Hallelujah. Because we're saved by grace. And it all ties in together. You know, we're not saved by grace that we can sin. God forbid. We're saved by grace that we can live under God. John 15 and 3. Now are ye. Now are ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Now, so Jesus said, look, these words I'm speaking unto you. They will cleanse you. They are cleaning you if you'll obey them. If you'll become doers of them. Ephesians 5 and 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. How the word washes you is you come into a road. Tells you not to lie, you don't lie. Tells you not to commit adultery, you don't commit adultery. Tells you not to fornicate, you don't fornicate. It's washing you, it's cleansing you. Hallelujah. It tells you to have a right spirit, you have a right spirit. Cleanse yourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit. And they leave nothing out. And we can only do that through the word by being obedient to the word. 1 Peter 1 and 22. See you have purified. Who did he say? He said ye. Have purified your souls. See he put this responsibility on us. 
So many people think God's going to knock them out, make them live right. No, you do it willingly. Seeing you have purified your souls and obeying what? The truth. Did it say truth? No, it said truth. There's only one living truth. Through the Spirit unto unfeigned love. That means righteous love. Something that is feigned, that is meant, it's not real, it's false. Unfeigned is real. Real love, true love of a brother. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. What does it mean by fervently? It means with all that you have. You put your all into it. My goodness, when somebody does something fervently, they, they're putting their all to it. They're putting their energy, everything into it. Hallelujah. You know, God don't leave nothing on time, does he? <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. But I'm thankful. I'm thankful. Hallelujah. I pray that you'll let this word, my goodness. I pray that you got your follow ground broken up through prayer and fasting and supplication. And through hearing the word, studying the word, applying yourself. Because this seed of God that was 